You've been doing this for 10 years now yes. as a special advocate. Give us a sense of exactly what the mission is. What are you trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. So what we've been trying to accomplish in the last 10 years is basically to make financial inclusion possible for people, for people that actually didn't have access to financial services uh, until now. So we've been working with countries from India, Pakistan, Tanzania, Ethiopia, South Africa, uh, Brazil, Argentina to actually, you know, make this uh, issue uh, a very important issue and also work with global partners to see, you know, what is actually hampering in the access to financial services. For example, the lack of actually having an ID by which, because of KYC AML issues, you cannot really open an account. Uh, the fact that it's actually a little bit of a business issue to actually have, for example, a bank uh, uh, shop, you know, very far away in the rural areas. So these issues have been actually talked about and we've, uh, thanks to technology, we've been able to really cater and, and really grow this tremendously. So we've grown now what, more than 1.2 billion people in the last eight years in many, many countries that now do have access to financial services thanks to technology, but also thanks to changes in regulations. So uh, as you say, there are a lot of developing countries where people are unbanked or underbanked, as I said, but it's not just uh, developing countries. We have that right here in the United States as a practical matter. There are a lot of people who don't have proper access to financial services. Yeah, here in the United States, uh, around 5 million people do not have uh, bank accounts. In the UK, one million, more than 1 million people do not have bank accounts. And actually, there's also an underbanked as well. So they might actually have a bank account, but they still have to go to money lenders to actually make ends meet, to actually have sort of, you know, bridge a little bit of the cash flow situation. So uh, it's not only an issue of just developing countries. Even in my country, the Netherlands, uh, people have less access to, you know, funds to start a firm. So access to capital for SME meet is also an issue. Financial health is an issue. You know, having financial literacy, understanding the responsibility you take when you actually take a credit is also very important. And being able to budget all your, uh, you know, cash flow to be able to make front to these responsibilities is also a very important issue. You mentioned technology as part of the, the arsenal of weapons you have to combat this. Uh, is it a leapfrogging thing? We saw that with telephony. We saw that with telephones where you actually went to cell phones, never went through landlines. How can technology really help that work? Well, it's the same leapfrogging. Basically, we've seen in countries like Myanmar, they, when they opened up, they never even, most of the people never even saw a bank, but all of a sudden they had a phone. So a lot of people had a phone but didn't have a bank account, so they went immediately into having an account on your mobile phone. So they've never seen a bank branch in their lives, but they've actually, see, they've been banking through the mobile phone. So today, they can actually make payments all around, you know, the country, and the way that they cash in or cash out is through mom and pop shops sometimes. It's not a bank branch or an ATM machine anymore. And that has been made possible through changes in regulations. And that is very exciting because I can actually get to much better, you know, further rural areas uh, and a much more affordable price and even make a one ticket, you know, uh, like a one dollar uh, payment even being affordable for the provider as well, which was not that before. So um, it's given us a host of new possibilities also to give credit and working capital. If you see that little mom and pop shop or merchant is handling $20 a day, he will be easily going to get a credit of $100. So this type of things are being made possible through technology and has really exploded the way that we can actually do financial inclusion. And you told us about how much progress has been made. Over a billion people have mm -hmm. been helped this way. How much further do you have to go? Well, there's not only on the amount of people we need to go further, so we still have 1.7 billion people to go, but also I think we need to pay a better attention on the quality of these services, because in the end of the day, these services are there to improve the lives of people, you know, improve their cash flows, improve their, you know, financial lives, and also be, you know, make it possible to, for them to protect themselves against shocks, you know, if somebody dies, a divorce, or, you know, a flood, and also for them to better invest in the future, you you know, is it a company, is it a house, etc. So we need to improve the quality of the services and inc improve the financial health of people. So for that, we really need to work together with the private sector a lot more, have much better insights in, in customer needs, and also have be much better data. And that's something we're trying to do with a lot of partners around the world. 
As you go around the world, uh, where is the most resistance? Uh, do you get resistance from governments? Is it from banks, for example, or financial existence institutions that exist now? Where do you get the resistance? Well, I think that change is, uh, is something that you know a lot of sectors would be resistant to. A central bank will not be very happy to immediately give a banking license to a mobile network operator. It needs to be you know develop trust and realize what are the risks and uh, and talk with a network operator. Can they actually take on this new job. The same thing for the banks. It's not easy for them to make a change and start looking at their business that is not, not anymore about banking branches, but actually working together with the telecom industry. And that means a completely different type of partnership. So, um, But we are seeing the change. And um, we are seeing some companies that have actually been leaders in this front and actually doing a lot of good and still actually being financially sustainable. So it's not only CSR. This is something that is good for them. It's not only sort of something that is good to do, but it's also smart to do.